it didn't go quite as well as I had hoped. Hi everyone, it is April from Getting Hogo With It. Today I'm here to do the second half of my October wrap up. To be honest, wasn't the best half of the reading month for me. Um, there's a couple of two stars in here, but we always start at the tippy top and then we end on a sour note. I don't know if that's the best way of doing it, but this is what we do here. I have one five star read that I really enjoyed this month so much and that was Rewind by Katherine Ryan Howard. This is now like definitely one of my favorite thriller books that I've read this year 100% but I loved it so much that I ran out and bought like a bunch of Katherine Ryan Howard books because it was fantastic. This uh, follows two characters in particular. One person um, is Natalie and she ends up going to Shannon Moore Cottages um, in Ireland and she's trying to solve a mystery related to her. We also follow the manager of Shannon Moore Cottages who is very creepy, like very unlikable, very creepy. He watches his guests um, through a camera. He's like placed these cameras throughout the cottages and he watches them and they have no idea that it's there um and that's disturbing well one night he's watching a woman in one of his cottages and she's murdered in front of him and he feels like he can't call the police because they'll find this camera and wonder like what why in the world are you um recording and and filming the guests that you have in um and it is about both of them and both of their lives and this was incredibly twisty turny this is also about fame natalie is a very famous woman she um i think is like an instagram star basically but she very much has the persona and then her life as i'm sure we all do like a, you know i i try to be as real as humanly possible here but you know, I have my own problems and stuff. Not that I'm an internet star. That's coming out wrong. All that to say, the the image that we all project online is different than who we are to a certain extent. And she's very good at that. She has mastered that. And she's very into her own privacy and really looking a certain way. I loved this book so much. It had a bit of Pretty Girls vibes to me. Um, I think probably just the footage part of it, but I just, I thought it was so much fun. So that was definitely a five-star read for me. So next we have a four-star read. It is also a thriller, and this is The Passengers by John Mars. This is the first John Mars book that I read, and I really enjoyed this. This follows a group of passengers who um, get into these cars. Now, we're a little bit further ahead in time, um, and we have self-driving cars. They don't need us. You just plug in your destination and the car brings you to the destination. Um, so we follow all of these passengers who suddenly hear this voice while they're driving to their supposed destination. And the voice says, oh, we, I changed the route. You will be going a different way. And in two and a half hours, you are going to die. And we have this jury who are trying to decide and are faced with making the decision of who should live of these passengers and who should die. And it's this person playing a game with people's lives. And I thought it was so much fun. Like I was riveted. I listened to this on audio and it was definitely a good idea to listen to it on audio. I didn't want to stop listening to it. I really enjoyed it. However, it did go on a little too long. If he had cut it shorter by about 50 to even like 75 pages, maybe more like 50. I think I would have given it five stars, but I found myself just kept going. And it, it became, it started to become silly to me because it was going on too long. Um, 
and I didn't love that. I did love the, you know, I feel like it was trying to make a statement. You know, it was quite dystopian and, and trying to say something. I enjoyed that. It very much felt like a Black Mirror episode. Um, and I, I did very much enjoy it. I can't wait to read the other John Mars that I have on my shelves now. Next up we have, oh my gosh, I just realized, I think I have three two-star reads. Oh, but first we're going to talk about a three-star read that I read in October and that was The Nanny by Gilly McMillan. This was enjoyable. Um, this is about a woman whose husband dies quite suddenly. She created this life with him. They have a child together and he dies and she doesn't have much choice but to move back in with her mother at this like big huge mansion that she grew up in. Now her mother was uh, not very involved in her childhood. She was much closer to her nanny. Unfortunately her nanny when she was a kid just left in the middle of the night. Didn't say goodbye. Her mother said that she left because she was a nasty child to her. Um, and that's why she left. And she's been so upset about it all of these years. Unfortunately, a body is found in the lake behind their home. And I think it's Bones in particular. And she's wondering, is this the nanny? I enjoyed it. I really liked um, the women in here. It's very female driven. Um, I thought some of them were well fleshed out. I got really frustrated with the mother in this though. And I didn't feel like it was fully realistic. Um, she, um, you know, her husband just died, but that means her child's father just died. And her child is trying to tell her certain things and she won't believe her repeatedly. And yes, that could happen, but I just felt like, wouldn't you be really interested in trying to listen to your child after they've just gone through the most devastating experience of their entire lives. She ended up being quite self-involved. Um, so that drove me a little bit nuts. I also, um, it, it wasn't overly thrilling. I cared what happened, but I wasn't thrilled by it. Um, and it is a thriller. I wouldn't say necessarily this is a mystery. Uh, but yeah, it, it was good. I gave it three stars and I, I will read more Gilly, Gilly or Gilly McMillan in the future. And now we're diving into some two star reads. Oh dear. Okay. Why don't we start with a sequel that I read that I just, just finished. Um, I read Thunderhead by Neil Schusterman. And I gotta tell you guys, I was bored throughout this. Um, I don't want to give away too much. Uh, the premise of Scythe, this is the second in the arc of a Scythe series. It's YA. Um, the whole premise is essentially nobody dies anymore. It's a utopia. And because no one dies in order to like more make more room for babies and all of that, there are these Scythes who will walk through the world and kill people slightly at random. That's the idea is that you aren't particular um but there's a lot of room for error in that um and corruption in that and this continues that corruption we we follow two teenagers a boy and a girl who are training to be the scythe and the scythe um and we continue following them here but we also follow a new character and i found that um unfortunate like I was disappointed that we were following this new character that I cared nothing about and the end <laughs> as we got to the end there was a gathering and there's the demise of several people that's kind of what happens in dystopian stuff utopian dystopian <laughs> uh, books um and I found that so silly like I was kind of chuckling and I really wanted it to be over so because of that I gave it two stars I do have a question I have um the toll on hold of the library I don't know where I am on that list but should I even read that should I bother or should I just stop now does it get better with the toll if you've read it I'd love to know the next book I need to share with you is Ring Shout 
Um, this is a tiny little book and I, I feel like this is one of those it's not you, it's me situations, if I'm being honest. This book was not for me. Um, it read very much like a Quentin Tarantino movie. It really felt like that. It was meant to be comedic horror. Um, oh, I should say what it's about. Um, this is about uh, a, I don't know if it's the future. No, it's not. I think it's set in 1915. It's like an alternate history um, where this movie, The Birth of a Nation, which actually exist, existed, um, swept across America and there was this rise in the Ku Klux Klan, which did happen in reality. But the Ku Klux Klan are actually like monsters, true monsters, um, not just like kind of in their heart monsters. Um, so they are monsters and we have a group of people killing them off. I loved the social commentary in here, but it just really wasn't for me. I didn't feel tied to anybody. I just was, I wasn't scared. I don't think that was the point of it. Um, it just didn't work for me and I really wanted it to work for me. Um, I'm sure if you are into horror and you are a horror buff and if you really love Quentin Tarantino movies, I think you will really like it. Uh, just, it wasn't, wasn't my thing. I think I saw that Stephanie from That's What She Read, I think I saw that she really liked it. And I, you know, I trust Stephanie. So, um, you know, don't just take my word for it on that one for sure. And last and kind of least um, is unfortunately Girls of Bracken Hill by Kate Moretti. This didn't work for me. This was a thriller mystery about uh, a girl who gets the call that her aunt was in a car crash and died and she has to go back to Bracken Hill which is the her aunt's um, home that she shared with her husband and you know kind of sort out her affairs there's no one else to do it just her and so she goes with her fiance and um, she's you know really reluctant to go because her sister um, went missing there. They used to spend their summers at Bracken Hill with their aunt and uncle every year as teenagers and they loved it and looked forward to it because they had a really nasty, nasty stepfather. And unfortunately, her sister went missing. Um, and now while she is there, there is a bone found on the grounds and she's wondering if it's her sister. Uh, it also goes backwards in time and explores that summer that her sister went missing. I usually love going back and forth in time. It's something that I enjoy a lot of the time, but this just didn't work for me. I found it relatively boring. I didn't care about any of the characters. There was romance in here. And that's not what's on the back. This is again, repeatedly, anytime that there's romance in a book that it doesn't say on the back, you please expect a lot of romance. Mm, it makes me mad. And I'm like, this is not what I was looking for. I don't care about love. I just want to get to the guts, the blood and guts. And there was really not a lot of that. I'd say this is definitely more mystery than thriller. I feel like maybe if you were new to thrillers, this might be exciting or it might be good. Just it wasn't for me. I don't think I'll be reading any more Kate Moretti. But this is good to do, you know? Sometimes you read, you know, new thriller authors and you're like, this is gonna be a favorite. And sometimes you read new thriller authors and sometimes you go, no, not for me. Anywho, let me know in the comments below um, what the best books that you read in October were. I would love to know. I hope you guys are doing really well. And I'll talk with you soon. Bye everybody.